And we are back here again. What's going on, my people? What's going on? What's up, my people in the podcast? Welcome to the People's Paradise. It's cool to be talking to you guys right now. Uh, welcome, as I can tell you, is welcome. Generally, I refer to my people on this Paradise podcast in singular rather than plural, but today I just really am a little bit unfocused. But I'm here now, and now we're going to have the conversation. And right now, I just turned on the Periscope cycle to have bring in my followers from Periscope, waiting for them to come in. What's up, my people on Periscope? How are you guys doing today? Welcome to. Oh, okay, there we go. Live. What's up with my people on Periscope? What's up with you guys? Well, I'm waiting for the chat room to open up a little bit. Hey, Antonio Ciprani, what's up with you? Welcome to the Paradise Podcast. How you feeling today, baby? Welcome to Bristol Bulldog. Welcome to the Periscope. Waiting for the followers to come in. We're going to start the subjects in a minute. Let's get the followers up in there. What's up with you, Danny? Danny Boy, what's up with you, Danny? Welcome to the Periscope. How you doing today? So who else is coming here today? Nobody else is coming. They're going to leave me alone. They're going to leave me alone. At Fred Compton. What's up with you, baby? Welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. How you feeling? Antonio came back. What's going on? I jump in that ring. I did the date to chance. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway. Hello, 44th President of the United States. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. That's funny. Buddy, 40 called me. He said, What about look? 44th president of the United States. What's up with you, baby? What's going on with you? So, anyway, the, the podcast, get the podcast rolling. As people start coming, I'm just going to start talking. Um, we have some interesting matter to talk about today. Um, needless to say, I usually start off this podcast with people's playlists and talk about what TV shows I'm watching, what music I'm having uh, fucking crying sessions for four hours about my ex-girlfriend about. But today, we're going to start with the people's penalty. And we're going to talk about a crime that happened, what apparently happened going on for almost a year. Because this is just an example of just straight um, craziness. I have ever, This is the craziest story I've ever seen in my life. At Babylon Breeders, what's up with you? What's up with you? Tell me where you from, baby. Um, there's a story breaking out about this teacher, and I want to say it was Ohio or Vermont. It was one of those two places out there. A teacher at Paola, Paola, muito bem falando com você, Paola. Como vai com você? Como vai? I'm just guessing that she's probably Brazilian. She might not be Brazilian, but if she is Brazilian, como vai? Um. There's a story that broke out about a teacher, a 25 year old teacher, and you guys might have heard about this. My people on the podcast, you might have, might have heard about this too. A teacher who was having sex with a 13 year old boy, and not only was a 13 year old boy blowing her back out, this 25 year old teacher actually moved the 13 year old in with her and moved his father in with her and was having sex with the boy while telling neighbors. She had an ongoing relationship with the boy while she was telling neighbor that the that the father that the bull father of the boy was actually her boyfriend. She even had her seventeen year old daughter calling the thirteen year old boy daddy. Now, ain't no thirteen year old got a got a got a D game like that. Let's just be real. Ain't no thirteen year old got a D game that good. So this woman obviously has some mental issues. That's the first thing. Um, second thing, the father ain't shit. I mean. The father, I, I only know the, I only know the, um, this story, this is one of those type of stories where even after the investigation, I feel like they probably, hey, Ramazan, what's up with you, baby, tell me where you're from, and welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast, how you doing? So, this is one of those stories where I feel that they left a lot out to, they left a lot out of explaining and they have a lot more to be investigated investigated because it's crazy to me that this woman literally f- had sex with a this woman literally had sex with a <laughs> one person in my thing said rims on you look so black eh, eh. but shout out to Otu Buki Tuki 27 what's up with you baby so anyway I can't, I can't, I can't believe there's got to be something more to that story. That's a, it's impossible. That's just it. Like she was just having sex with a kid, and that's it. Like I don't know. It just, it just seems kind of weird to me. But it is what it is. I mean, people do weird stuff. 
y'all just saw me shoot a big girl book out of my nose and I apologize about that but people do weird I mean people do weird stuff all the time people have weird habits of sexuality all the time but the reason why I brought up this story first is because when I was listening to this other radio show that comes on in the morning yesterday they were talking about it and there was one radio host on the show who was saying that you know, hey, you got to get a thirteen-year-old props for getting a twenty-five-year-old. You you got to get a thirteen-year-old props for having them for having sex with a teacher. You got to get that thirteen-year-old props. You got to get him props, man. He getting some getting some swing at thirteen years old. God damn, this game must have been good. And and what I said is that's kind of a messed up double standard because have that like when I was growing up, I knew a few kids who had sex with teachers. I knew a few ones, you know, they weren't 13, they were like 15, 16, 17 years old. Around that time where kids go through puberty and start developing muscles and shit. You know, they was on the football team, they st- and they are in the walk, teachers out, they look good. At 3 out 7, 2000, what's up with you? So, in their eyes, they look good. Now, my personal opinion is, and I've always said this, is why, oh, I'm not going to put this in a nice way. Why is there such a double standard with that? Because if a 25-year-old man has sex with a 13-year-old girl, then there will be a big issue. And me personally, I have an issue with that too. It's just something seems wrong with that. I would have, I would have an issue. With, I would have an issue with that too. So, I, it's a, it's a very odd double standard. I've always noticed that it's a, a very, very, this is very different. It's a weird double standard. Like I would trip. Like I would trip. Like, for example, if my, my little brother, you know, he's 14, 15 years old, if he had sex with a teacher, I probably would be like, yeah, go ahead and do it. But if my sister, who's 16, had sex with a man who's 28, I would be pissed off and be mad. Like, why would you do that? And I probably want to go fight the dude. But the catch is, the catch is, like I said, it's that double standard. It's that double standard that is just crazy, man. It's just crazy. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Tell my people on Periscope. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys think. You know, I have a conversation. I'm doing this podcast because I obviously have a conversation with you guys. So, tell me what you guys think. I want to get you because I get you guys' opinion on this. Um. Also, hmm. I don't know. You know, what's funny is like in most. I was telling somebody about this in the United States. The view, the general consensus is that. A woman shouldn't start having sex until she's 18 years of age. But if you go to a lot of different states around here, particularly a lot of these hick ass states, you go to a lot of them, most of them, most of them, the age of consent is, most of them, the age of consent is, um, is 16, 15, 14. Like, like these kids out here having sex hecka hecka young. So it's crazy. I don't mean, it's, I don't know. Me personally, I think the age of consent should be based on a, a mental development and physical development individually of the person. Like there are a lot of women who are, who are having sex who are eighteen years old who have the mind of a fourteen year old in my opinion who shouldn't be having sex. There's a lot of women out there having sex who are sixteen year old and have went through a lot more shit than that eighteen and nineteen year old went through and so they have more experience, that more mental development. So this is what it is. Me personally, I don't like having sex with a chick unless she's at least nineteen or twenty just because I don't know that eighteen. That sh- that eighteen. That eighteen line kind of scared me. I don't like that. Like that eighteen line. Something about eighteen. It just kind of scared me. Like just nineteen. At least nineteen, twenty. Make sure you're over the rope. I'm cool. Just totally cool. And so with that being said, we'll go to the next topic. Let's see what we got talked about today. Now, I want you guys to tell me what you think. People on the podcast. When people pet my brother on the podcast. Tell me what you guys think. Now. Next topic. Next topic we're going to go into is we're going to have the Nelly versus Drake conversation. Now, this was funny. So on Twitter yesterday, a little this odd this odd like battle I guess kind of broke out about who was more popping in their heyday, Nelly versus Drake. Well, really, the battle was if if Nelly would have came out. With the same technology, with the same with the same technology, with the same streaming um, thing that we have nowadays, would Nelly would have been more popping than a Drake? Would Nelly would have had more hit records? Would he have been the new? Would he have been the top female sensation like a Drake was? And 
They brought some interesting debates. In fact, I'm going to wait to open up my Paris couple of things. I want to see what the people have to say about that, too. Let me see. In the moon. And by the way, if you hear that rumbling in the background, that's because somebody doing construction under my hotel. Uh, and and that's why that rumbling's there. But we're open the periscope now. On periscope. Nelly versus Drake. I jump on that here to take the chance. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, Okay. So anyway, everybody was in there. They were debating about it. They were saying like, "Who will win, Nelly versus Drake?" Like in a battle, who will win, Nelly versus Drake? My, my personal thought, my opinion on that, my opinion is this: I think verse you can't compare them. You can't really compare. Um, okay. Hold on. The camera's not flipping. Okay. You know what? Oh, okay. One thing you can't really compare it um, to my people who are listening to me right now on Periscope. I can't um I can't hear you guys be- I can't see your comments because the, the you can't the video's not working, but okay, there we go. Okay. My thing is this you can't you can't, it's hard to compare a Nelly and a Drake in a situation of who would be the top artist because with Nelly and Drake, for one, Nelly was never really all on the same level as a Drake. Drake was more, Drake, Drake is on that Jay-Z level. Nelly was more, I look at Nelly as like a prolonged Fetty Wap. And I ain't hating on Nelly because I love Nelly's work. I love Nelly's, I love Flappy. I, to this day, I still listen to Flappy Wings. To this day, I still listen to, um, uh, what's that song yeah with Kelly Rowland? Um, are you no dilemma, dilemma. So I still love a lot of Nelly's music, but Nelly was never on the same level as a Drake. That's just it is what it is. And Mia, Mia, hi, Mia, hi, how you doing today, baby? Welcome to the Periscope. Tell me where you from. Tell me where you from. Tell the people where you from. Welcome to the Periscope right now. And my man H two O Addict, what's up with you, baby? We having a conversation. Who do you think was better, Nelly or Drake? But I think you can't compare the two because I don't think, like I said, Nelly was never, Nelly never really had that that type of fame stick that Drake has. I mean, like I said, Nelly was more of like a, Nelly was more of like a, a trend. Like I said, he was like a prolonged, it's what I said exactly, he was a prolonged Fetty Wap. Drake, I don't like, I'm not feeling the new music that Drake's doing right now. I'm not feeling all that singy, sing-songy, sad, 1960s crooner type of style you're trying to do. To me, it kind of it sounds corny in a lot of ways. But I can't deny the fact that he's making a big impact in music right now. I think with, hey, what's up with you about Anja, DJ48, what's up with you, baby? Tell me where you from. So, como esta? But I think with him... I can't deny that Drake is making a big impact on music, and I can't deny that if you compare the two, he's doing better. Now, if Nelly had a Nelly, that's, that's not even really a good comparison. That's why I was kind of confused on Twitter yesterday, because I was like, who would even have that comparison? I mean, Nelly, that's not a good comparison. You compare Nelly to like a Fetty Wap. Like I said, you compare Nelly to like a Fetty Wap, like a, um, a Rich Homie Quan or a Young Thug. Drake's on that level where you would compare Nelly to a... J- uh, Drake's on that level where you compare Drake... Drake, you can put Drake in the same room as a Jay-Z. You can put Drake in the same room as a Tupac. You can put put Drake on an airplane with a... Not even a Nas. Nas ain't even the same level as Drake. Because everybody loves Drake. Although I will say... There is something to be said about music being consumed differently nowadays. Because hip-hop has always been famous around the world. But... When you come here... Nowadays... Like in this time... In this day and age... It's more, um, it's more, um, what's what I'm looking for? It's more, 
Hip hop nowadays is more. Um, hip hop nowadays is more. It's the word I'm looking for. Hip hop nowadays is more accessible to the whole world now. Like I, there was a time where I thought pop music was more popular than hip hop. I think now they're around the same level. Because as far as I see, I see more hip hop artists in the news rather than pop artists. That's because like hip hop culture in general is so dramatic. Like every five minutes, you have something happen. Some rapper gets slapped. Somebody gets shot. Somebody mama get this. Somebody baby get thrown out the car. Somebody bodyguard gets shot in the club shooting. Like literally. Every single five minutes, you have some traumatic event happen in hip-hop music. And I think mean, that's part of the culture. Welcome. Oh, at list 13. List underscore 13. It says this is your first day on Periscope. I don't know why Periscope want to put your business out there in the street like that. I don't want people to know what my first time was, but welcome to the Periscope. Why are you doing it there? So, um... What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? I was talking about something. So more of the story is music. Yeah, music consumed. Music is consumed differently nowadays. It just it is. Um, at, at 33, 33, 30, at J, 333, three, three, J, what's up with you, baby? So music just consumed differently nowadays. You know, it is what it is. You can't knock it. So now, if you want to compare somebody, if you want to compare somebody and do a poll, forget Nelly versus Drake. Do Drake versus Jay Z. Plies versus Lil Boozy. Tupac versus Tupac versus Kendrick Lamar, Biggie versus J. Cole. Well, not even in comparison. Like, it was a Tupac versus Kendrick Lamar. That's a good one. Because I think had Tupac been born in this generation, I thought he would. I think he did a good job. A lot of people blow Tupac up and say that he was one of the greats and say he would have went down as a great and hip hop would have changed if he was still here. Me personally, I don't believe. I don't believe hip hop would be that much different if Tupac was still here because you got to understand. Tupac was hot, and Tupac was a hot artist, but people are always at their greatest if they die in their youth. If they die in the middle of the high point of the career, we always see them at their top. You know, most artists aren't appreciated until they die. Mac Dre, rest in peace, one of the most famous artists, one of the most culturally popular artists, most important, one of the artists who are most important to the hip-hop scene in the Bay Area. He, um, he passed away, and they treated him like he was a king and stuff like that, but the catch is... He wasn't even all that good of a rapper, like, but he he really didn't hit fame, 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 fame. Well, he was always famous in the Bay Area. Truthfully, California always had Mac Dre's back. California always had Mac Dre down, but he always he um he never really was like a popping rapper. And even when he he wasn't really all that good of a rapper, to be honest with you. I never thought Mac Dre was all that cool. His lyrics were ah, his flow was ah. Like I, I really thought he was overrated. But I'm from Valero. So of course, I gotta show love to the brother. I gotta show love to the brother, and I gotta show respect. You know it is what it is. But um, yeah, man. I don't know. If you want to compare artists, compare them to that'd be a comparison. Anyway, that's how that went. So that's how that. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was um, and I guess I'll end the podcast on this. Another episode has been a lot shorter. Careful, what's up with you, baby? Underscore careful. Shout out to you for growing in the Periscope. I guess I'm in the Periscope on this because right now, um, like I said, I got to uh, start getting ready for work. But right now, I'm in San Francisco temporarily. I we look just alike. <laughs> what's up with you, family? I assume we do look just alike. I assume we do. Both sexy bitches. Anyway, first time I cursed the whole podcast. Round of applause for me. Now. First time I got cursed. Um... Any good puff lad? No, no, no. At you, Jones 420, welcome to the Periscope, man. I don't know. This is your first day. Well, welcome. Hope you're having a good time. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, dang it. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. Okay, so anyway, what I was saying was, is, um, right now I'm in San Francisco. I'm in San Francisco, and this is the home of homeless people like this is really like a safe haven home of homeless people and <laughs> love you on Star Wars <laughs> who was out on Star Wars I gotta I gotta give me curious who was, who was out on Star Wars but I think that um, 
This is obviously San Francisco is a haven for homeless people. If you walk down the street, there are literally homeless population, homeless tribes. They have a homeless history here. Like they actually have homeless people villages and stuff like that. Like this is it actually is like a homeless people culture out here. And I'm bringing all this up because you always see all these programs, you know, for feeding the homeless, take care of the homeless, do that for the homeless, do this and that. I'm at a point now to where. I'm really starting to lose sympathy for homeless people in the United States of America. And the reason why is because the reason why I'm starting to lose hope, uh, sympathy for a lot of homeless people, for homeless people in America is because I think Americans, we don't take the time to value how blessed we are to live in this country. You know, even just now, how I'm talking to you right now, how I'm pursuing my dream to be like a top broadcaster. <laughs> Or do the voice of Darth Vader? It's stupid. <laughs> even thank you, bro. But even yeah, they didn't. They didn't pay me though. They didn't pay me to be the voice of Darth Vader. I didn't. I still ain't received that check. Um. Even though, um, even though, even though there's poverty here, I understand there's certain things like social issues. You know, systematic oppression. The government wants to keep the poor at the poorest level. I understand it. That's all true. That's all things. You know, hey, let's all be woke. Let's all be woke. You know, hey, it's whatever. But. At the end of the day, we still live in the greatest country in the world. And even now, I'm talking to you now, right now, I'm pursuing my dream to be a broadcaster. I'm pursuing my dream to be a great broadcaster around the world and stuff like that. In this country, I can do that. I'm talking to you right now. I'm recording a Periscope. I'm doing a podcast. In this country, I can do that because we have so many opportunities. I have you can have the opportunity to come up from the bottom and go to, come from the bottom and go to the top and be on the same level as a Bill Gates, as a Warren Buffett, as a Jay Z, as a Biggie. You can you have that chance in this country. And what I'm starting to lose lack of sympathy for, I have a lack of sympathy for people who are born in this country and they just don't try to, they don't try to be anything. They just settle for the lowest, the lowest possible outcome. And to me, that's bull because you live in America, man. Like you, you live, you live in America. You don't live in some small, some small village in Nigeria where they get their heads chopped off and their women raped. Like, hey, Kelly got bands. What's up with you? Kelly got bands. How you doing today? Kelly, Kelly got bands. That's a very pretty man. Kelly got bands. I love, I love, I love when you see white girls around these like these really just stereotypically hip hop names like Kelly got bands. Ricky, uh, Rashana Ratchet. Kelly, all my bitches got all my bitches got AK forty seven. They always got all these crazy ass names. Where are you from? Tell the people where are you from. But anyway, as I'm waiting for Kelly Bond, Kelly got bands to respond. That's what I'm just saying. Like when you come to this country, man, you know you got all these people who came up from the bottom. Molly Cyrus came from the bottom. Jay Z came from the bottom. The Kool Aid Man came from the bottom. Courage the Cowley Ball was born from the bottom. Puerto Rico, oh, Puerto Rico, cómo estás? Mucho bien hablando con tú. Por qué tú? Por, entonces, cómo tú uh, tú sabes cómo hablar hablar um, inglés? O tú sabes cómo escribir escribir inglés? Sí. But when you live in this country, you have so many opportunities, man. It's like, I don't see why. I don't see why you wouldn't strive to be the best. I don't see why you wouldn't strive to be great. You know, that's why my thing is. So when I see these people, when I walk past these people in the streets that are homeless and poor, I start to have a lack of sympathy for them. Because I'm like, man, you live in America. You have the opportunity to be great. You have the opportunity to be somebody great. You have the opportunity to do this and do that. Just being born here, like... I hate people who come up with excuses for why they haven't made it in life. I hate that. Like, I hate that more than anything. Because at the end of the day, man, you were born in America. Like, it's... You you have... I don't know. My thing is, you have so many opportunities to be somebody in this country. I don't see no reason why why you can't. It just it is what it is. So, I guess what I want to end this podcast on is saying this. This is the greatest country in the world. And truthfully, in the history of the... This might not be the greatest country in the world in historical terms, but as far as right now, nigga, this is the best you got. And there's no other place in the world you can go to you have these many opportunities. Now, obviously, obviously there are some issues we need to work on. Obviously, we need to work on the poor. Obviously, we need to work, work on homelessness. Obviously, we need to work on those things. But as of right now, this is one of the best, best places to live at right now in the world. And you got to appreciate that. So when you see these people out there who are homeless and stuff like that, you know, I don't even give them that change anymore. I might offer them a burger. I might take them to somewhere to eat, but which I actually got a funny story about that. Yesterday, this little, um, this little boy, 
So my job site at Hugh Jones, like, what's up with you, Hugh Jones 420? So at my job site last night, last night I was getting off of work, closing the door at the, at the construction site I was about to leave. This little boy across the street, not a little boy, like an Asian kid, maybe like 20, 23 years old. And he couldn't speak English well. He was like, Atnika, Atnika, Atnika. And I was like, I don't understand. Atnika, Atnika, da, ah, ah. I, like he literally sounded like he sounded like like the uh, like the walk the little Chewbacca the Wookies from Star Wars from the original Star Wars the Wookies. He's like I, 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 I. I was like man I can't understand what you're saying you I don't I, I really don't understand you right now. So then he said then I said you know what let me just see if I want to do Google Translate. So we did Google Translate we did Google Translate and we came to find out come to find out. I was trying to get back home. Long story short, I paid for him an Uber to go back to this place, and he was so happy. He started crying and hugging me and stuff like that. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. He started bowing and shit and crying all over me. It's like, man, calm down. That's okay, that's okay. But I felt good, you know. Even though he didn't give me my eleven dollars, some don't give me my eleven dollars. But even though he didn't give me my eleven dollars, man, I, I still felt good. I still felt like, hey, you know, I did something good. I still feel like I did something good. So you know, that is what it is. I mean, he got home safely, hopefully. You know, and, you know, hopefully his mom and dad were happy to see him, man. You know, it is what it is. Hmm. It's Lixie. It's What's up with you, baby? Welcome to the Periscope. Hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, with that being said, I'm going to get the Periscope right now because I really enjoy talking to you guys, but... I uh, gotta go, get ready, and stuff like that. And to my people in the podcast, I'm going to cut the podcast short right now because I gotta get ready to go somewhere else. Life out just call me Sarah. Slixie, just call me Sarah. One of the people on my Periscope, they just said, Slixie, just call me Sarah. Well, Sarah, if your name is Sarah, why didn't you just name your uh, profile that? It's so rush root. What's up with you, so rush root? Yeah. Uh, and Sarah said, your voice, face, ours. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Your face, your name. How's your day going today, Sarah? It's Sarah in Arabic. Oh, so Sarah in Arabic. You know, actually, like my name. Like I tell people to call me JT. My name is JT, by the way. But my name in Arabic, my first name is Joseph. Is um, is Yusuf. I, just, I guess they say it's like actually kind of like a common, even in Arabic, it's a common name. Like my name is one of the most common names in four or five different languages. That is, that is so creepy. I got, I, I really don't like that. At one and one KOTW, was that what you been Welcome to the Periscope. How you doing? So, yeah. So I don't know. More the story is. Hey, was that what you? So much enthusiasm. So anyway, so Sarah, tell me, where, where are you at, Sarah? Are you in Saudi Arabia right now? How do you speak English then? Oh, she's probably, you're probably an American who was raised in my back. Uh, and so with that being said, I guess I can get the podcast short now. I guess I can talk for two minutes to the people on it, though. What's going on, my people? Tell me what's going on. Hmm, no comments. Are there any questions to my people on Periscope right now? Are there any questions before I turn off the Periscope? Because i got to go to some other stuff. Are there any questions? And of course I want to ask you guys to follow me. Please follow me. Are there any questions? Not one. Not one. Nobody has a question. Okay. Well, with that being said, my people, I have to say goodbye. And I apologize. i got to say goodbye. What is the podcast? Oh, one person told me that one. What is the podcast? The podcast is the People's Paradise Podcast. Um, if you follow me on Periscope right now, the link to the podcast, to the app for the podcast, is in my bio, my profile link. If you follow me on Periscope, and you go to right there, it's going to be a link that takes you to my Periscope, to my podcast app. And you can download the podcast and listen to me regularly, carry me, carry me around in your pocket. And from there on, we get out of conversation. I do this podcast every single day, Monday through Saturday. Sunday, I take off, because that's the Sabbath. And... That's just my life. So, you know, with that being said, um, yeah, that's my life. So, make sure you participate. Make sure you join into the Periscope. Make sure you join into the podcast. I've got a conversation later. It was cool talking to you, Sarah. Hope you follow me. My man who said, "Hey," hope you follow me too. 
and hope to hear from you guys soon. And with that being said, this is the People's Paradise Podcast. It was cool talking about people on here. And with that being said, we are out of here. We're out of here. My people on the People's Paradise Podcast, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning into the forum. Hope you have a good time.